This painting is called Alive in the Fall. I combined two concept sketches into one to form this painting. It's sort of a return to an old idea, but also maybe a favorite sort of signature of mine, having multiple hands. Starting at the underpainting, things went awry, <laughs> completely awry. The colors I chose made me feel really limited, so I stopped and stepped away from it and then came back and painted without my headphones, so no music or um, YouTube videos to flow with or distract me. I told myself I needed to be like completely conscious and present to save it. And with that approach, I was able to. Everything I did was deliberate from that point on. I had a paint explosion mishap that mishap that stained my shirt orange. It matches though, so I guess it's fine. But the sign off gets botched later on, so maybe I'm damned. I don't know. While I was working on saving it, it dawned on me that this was giving pumpkin. It was very pumpkin. Concept sketch I sketched back in October, although I didn't really get exposed to a ton of pumpkins. I'm not into holidays, and I don't do anything remotely festive. Unless you count, like, watching Halloween baking shows. Those were the only sort of pumpkins I saw. You'll see to get away from the pumpkin shape that makes it cartoonish. Although, I am inspired by cartoons, so I'm not sliding cartoons. Because, like, although they're superficially made for kids, the animators slash, like, illustrators um, get to be more liberal with the presentation. Like, Courage the Cowardly Dog, you can't find a lot about that show, or really the creator, but, like, he really did the most. Like, the way that the bodies are depicted, like, even most Cartoon Network shows, Cartoon Network is the home of, like, cartoons that kind of push it, really push the limits. I've watched a whole video about how Adventure Time was rejected so many times, but Adventure Time wasn't actually the catalyst show for, like, Cartoon Network's, like, dark era, their dark creative era. It was actually Flapjack, which uh, I've been inspired by before. Taunton Rabbit was inspired by Flapjack. I say that in that video. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> I went off on a tangent. Uh, I create a more prominent elbow to get away from the cartoonish quality because... I guess I'm really into Saturnalian or maybe, uh, what is it? What is it? What is the word? What is the word? Oh, it's eluding me. Okay, I'm sorry. But, uh, then, now being later, after it's completed, I have titled it Alive in the Fall. So I lean into, like, the Halloween pumpkin look it has, it has to it. Um, alive in the fall, not like the weekend, but I do, I do get the idea, as I've done some of my best work in the fall, but if you're like me, you correlate the fall, I, I like to correlate a lot of things, that's how my mind works. The fall could also mean the fall from grace, metaphorically, and literally a smidge, like a sort of depression. Uh, to reference myself, it's, uh, it's like... Some people's best work was made after they've come out of a dark place and they've, like, experienced some sort of, like, transformation, something life-altering, dark, tragic sometimes. Like, I think Mariah Carey, the Emancipation of Mimi, she came out of a dark place and she, she just bounced back some people's, like, great Anne Rice. Because when she wrote Interview with a Vampire, the Interview with a Vampire, her daughter had died. And that was basically, like, she came out of a dark place and writing that book was, like, a very good coping mechanism. And, like, once you really do that, once you really go through some stuff, you really, you really get it. So, yeah. The project I did a way back called, um, Like the Angels I Revolt. So, fall, revolting, falling. That was a trip. That was a trip. Um, but, you know, I think it's worth it. You know, the cost of freedom is no question for me then, you know. And a bit more of my own idea this kind of represents as well is, like, Death Lives, also sort of another project that I did. And a part of living to me, at least, includes the knowledge of dying. One way or another, you're going to die. Uh, I'm not actually very macabre. In the end, the painting does have a lovely nightmare quality, or, I think, I'm biased. I was tempted to do something riskier that I haven't even conceptualized fully to have reference to sketch for it, but I didn't because such an improvis improvisation on something that's already so icky is 
it's a terrible idea. And speaking of bias, I watched all but one of the Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. It's kismet. It really is. So much in my life, I really feel like. It's, it's so, so kismet. A Cosmic Kiss. H.P. Lovecraft, the Pikmin, the Pikmin's model, really has been the only highlight of that series. And I did, I watched it on two speed. I might rewatch it because the imagery of it is like so luscious and beautiful and dark. And I really, I really relish in that type of stuff. Because <laughs> it's just like, oh yes, haunt me. A changeling taken by demons rather than fairies, that was the only sort of like plot twist. Of course, you know, the adaption differs from the story. I own the compilation, a compilation book of H.P. Lovecraft's short story, so, so I really know. When I watch things like that, it makes me curious about being alive in an era of movement. Modern times, the idea of a movement is spoiled by, like, the prevalence of media. There is a sort of hive mind to information sharing that negates the confidence I imagine it would take to think for yourself in earlier points of history. The ostracization, 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 me and that, ooh, probably was, was way more extreme. Anyway, I promised myself in this painting to do teeth. It does have teeth, so it's sensible that I can bring up the short story The Hunger Artist by Franz Kafka. I don't know when I read it, but I know immediately after my obsession with it began, and of course, I have a tattoo of it, or a tattoo in relation to it. Similarly, I equate it to Florence and the Machine's song Hunger, then the lyrics that randomly pop into my mind. I stay hungry like I'm only fed water and bread. Exhibit. I think that's Exhibit in Busta Rhymes. And I also think Marina, formerly of the Diamonds. It's hard to not, it's, it's hard not to say the Diamonds part. She also uses the theme of hunger. To be truthful, I didn't understand what this painting meant to me while I made it. Not a, not, not at all. My paintings always have a meaning, even if I'm not aware of them at the time. The unintentional pumpkin. Me, a fall baby. October is basically like pumpkin season, prime time. Pumpkins get grown, then gutted, and their corpses are then related for the sake of festivities. Then they are left to rot or thrown in the garbage where they rot. You should hear me talk about coffee. Because <laughs> I, I was talking about coffee with my sister and I was like, the way it smells, it's like when you go down into the earth. When you're learning like geography and they're talking about like the earth's crust, I feel like coffee smells like the layer just before you get to the molten lava. If you take anything away from this, it is art. Truly art. 